going back. Sorry, folks, that uh, we had to go offline for just a second. Uh, I recognize that one. That one's the tried and true. Set up over here, huh? 
of the Bradley Man and Contingent. We're uh, here at uh, Howard and Beale in lovely San Francisco, downtown San Francisco in the Financial District, south of Market. It's a beautiful day, 75 degrees, 80 degrees outside. There's a slight breeze blowing. It's going to be a more perfect day to march at the uh, SF Pride Parade. So I'm glad you could join us. Check out everything. Thanks for the retweet. And let's see if there's anybody in the chat. No, nobody yet. Pride in our whistleblower. We're here in support of Bradley Manning. It's a pride parade here in San Francisco. Third largest parade in the world. Now personally, this is the first time that I've participated in 10 years. Over 10 years. I guess you get jaded. But I'm here this year. Uh, tomorrow I'll be live streaming. Uh, at 8.30 in the morning, provided I can get up. Uh, we'll be covering the Idle No More uh, protest. Uh, no on Ke Ke no on the Keystone XL pipeline. And that'll be at the Canadian Consulate here in San Francisco in the Financial District. At Sutter and, or California and Montgomery, I believe. Don't quote me on that one, but I'm pretty sure. Hey, we know you're on it. What's up? What the fuck are you putting on my cake? I think oh, that's the mother's cake. Oh, I got a bomb. Oh, there is a bug. I put it in Bad choice. Yeah, I knew that. That's why I sent you a second text message. I know, but I didn't think about it, right? And now I'm like, oh, holy shit. I just sent something that was like, oh, right? Is, is the sound on? No, no, I'll turn it off. I'm going to uh, turn the sound off for a second here, people, so I can have a private conversation.
Yeah, sorry about that, folks. I had to have a private conversation with a friend of mine. But it's all good. And yeah, we're glad you're here and watching. Let your friends and neighbors know. We're here at SF Pride here in San Francisco. The world's third largest parade, the largest, not the largest in California, but the second largest. The world's largest parade is Carnival in, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Uh, the second largest parade is the Rose Parade in Pasadena, California on New Year's. And But this is the third largest parade in the world. And today we'll have approximately, on the march, about 1.3 million people that are watching. How are you going to get down the length from this thing? What's up? I got somebody who's going to take my chair and I'm going to walk. Okay. I got it pretty well figured out. I rested up. I think Monday I'm going to call my doctor and schedule surgery and have the uh, and have the rod removed out of my leg and the screws. Because he told me this is, uh, you don't feel like you need them and have them taken out because of the cause of arthritis on your arm. Arthritis. And uh, I can feel it in my leg and it fucking hurts after a while. Having it, you know, because I got so much metal in my body. And I strip it, hold my neck together. Do you want to sit down for a few minutes? Uh, I, I might do it. I can't even slide the park. I've seen every once in a while. But, uh, yeah, I got two hemi replacement hips, total shoulder replacement. Hi! Hi, how you doing? This is Three Man Sullivan at the park. Clark. Nice to meet you. Should we turn this side off for a second? Oh, yeah, sure, we're going to... Yeah, it's kind of doing a disservice to my viewers not to have the sound on. Because a lot of these people, I actually know who they are, right? It's not like the whole world is out there watching. They are, but a lot of people that watch, I know who they are, and I really like In fact, what's really cool about this How many people is there's nobody people? talking right now. There's only about four or five. But when people, but when people want to watch, like, log in, they can log on the social stream and comment, right? And you 
can actually have two-way communication with people while you're live streaming. Oh, and that's kind of that's the main reason. Can I they see the action too? Yeah, they see. Yeah, they see exactly what I'm exactly what they're watching. Oh my god! Yes, I'm uh, like it's like a little miniature mobile project. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Keep it on. Yeah, I'm a real tech. <laughs> so I program software, I program websites, and all kinds of cool shit. You know, none of it which makes me any money right now, but that's never been. Yeah, because I'm like the tech guy. Yeah. Yeah, I like your side. That one looks like it was dry. Uh, was that printed or? Yeah. That was actually silk screen, it looks like. Yeah, um. That's a nice one. One of my friends knows the artist. Like, I. You know, I think someone kind of assembled this and can kind of claim that it's really theirs. <laughs> I think it's one of their sons or something like that. <laughs> okay. cool. I like doing this. This is like, did you ever see the movie called The Fifth Element? With Bruce Willis and the uh, science fiction movie? Uh -huh. well, they have a character in it called Ruby Red. And Ruby Red was like this black DJ who accompanied him. That's because he won this prize for his vacation. They had to have some, like added gear and promoting it. And he walked around with a little wand that was like this. But he didn't have, I don't know if he had video or not. But it was, it was important to him. It's, 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 it's worth watching if you ever get some time. It's funny. It's, I, I rewatched this the other day. It was kind of like that's the movie. But it always makes me laugh. Right? Anything that makes you laugh is very precious in this movie, right? So, right? And even Bruce Willis is as right wing and militaristic as he can be. Uh, that was like one of his movies where he was actually like one of the big breath. And it was a good movie. Right? He, wasn't, he wasn't always this right winger that everybody has supported him to be. Right? So, not until he got a lot of money. Are you, right? You're not live TV. Are you the guy that does the TV? Yeah, yeah, it's me. Live yeah, streamer. You, you, you yeah, I wanted a t shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I got your uh, thing up on my wall. Right, because you handed me a flyer that day. I got him. I think I might have your sign. Right. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the, I don't have any money yes. today. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll catch you later then. Hi. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's the end of the month. Oh, it's fine. But like, do get a hold of me. Yeah. Yeah. Do get a hold of me. Yeah, I got you. I think you got your phone. You know, it's funny because somebody ordered a small, and I was in the printers. And, and the union printers, right? And this lady, I'm a pusher, you know, so I said, you want to buy a t-shirt? She said, yeah, what size? Small. I said, well, I got one small, and I was thinking I had promised this to some young girl three months ago, right? right. And I, I said, well, you want to hold up so your, I did the, You I want to hold up the t-shirt so the people online can see? Oh, you, oh, you yeah, I'm on live, yeah, I'm live streaming right now. Yeah. Right? Like and where would they get one of these t-shirts? Uh, let's see. Call me at uh, 510-541-3835. So that's 510-541-3835. And, and I have an email. And what's your email? And it's O-R-I-O-N underscore O-R-I-O-N 99 at Yahoo. So it's O-R-I-O-N underscore underscore O-R-I-O-N 99 at Yahoo. Yeah. Okay, at Yahoo. And my my other slogan is a single spark will light a prairie fire and burn, baby, burn. And what kind of pie? Occupy. Occupy. I didn't know you were doing your live thing. I was saying, wait, you never. Yeah, well, it's kind of become uh, epitomous to my lifestyle now, right? Uh, that's wonderful yeah. that you're doing that. Yeah. I really like your t-shirt. Oh, thanks. Do you mind if I take a picture? Oh, sure. Just sure. send them relatives and they can yeah, you can probably Google this in there. Uh, you can Google this, but it says on it. Stop it, you can see it. If you want a copy, if you want one, yeah. Is that really shirt? Sure? No, I bought it off of a vendor, yeah. like, like that gentleman right there. Yeah. Right? But it was for Zendrick Farms, which is this organic uh, outfit. Yeah. 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 Thank you. We're out here supporting Bradley Manning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah
good sooner or later. On the marge. I think that I was actually live streaming this march and covering it like a march and not just covering Bradley Manning. I would probably set up somewhere around Civic Center, but uh, I wanted to cover the Bradley Manning protest more. So that's kind of why we're not moving, folks. You have to devote your whole life to it. their own money and their own resources more than, like, yeah, they don't do a lot to acquire any money in the first place. I mean, if it worked up, yeah. I know of her. I've heard, like, her story from a lot of different people, actually. People outside of the GoPro's neighborhood would know about her. No one told me where she is now, actually. Like, where is she now? Does she ever... Like, I assume her daughter's probably old enough to talk to her if she wants to, or whatever. Like, where her personal life got to be part. gentleman is always the most impeccable dresser. Right? I've seen him all over the place. And he just dresses so wonderfully. Every time I see him, he's always, like, he looks like a fashion plate for the 20s, right? I, I like, I appreciate people who do good fashion. I, mean, I used to be a real fashion uh, kind of a guy, right? But, uh, like, I'll be a teacher. Ever, uh, when, I, when I started cycling, that my old fashion sense went out the window. Right? I used to I used to live outdoors and cycle it, right? And around the Bay Area. And I had a little office I used to go to downtown here to do my programming. And uh, that was a really great thing. I, you know, I wish I could live outdoors again like I, like I had because it was so healthy. I was like 150 pounds of like lean. I like, love my bicycle. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about gonna get to back try to plan my first like distance yeah. trip, yeah. like an overnighter of some sort. I'm kind of leaning toward going to uh, Pigeon Point Lighthouse to spend the night and dig around and be tired of riding. That's a good ride. And yeah, I'm starting in Oakland, <laughs> so yeah. I kind of am thinking maybe. Well, what you do is you take over the bus. here, and going down the water. Yeah, uh, oh. there's a good park called. If you're really into biking. There's a good park up in San Rafael called China Camp Park been closed, right? Which, there's nobody watching the park. But it, uh, it's, a, it's a nice little park because they have a little beach there, too, where you can you know, wade into the water and stuff. Oh, cool. Right? And so, like, and it's, like, perfect recycling, right? It's for, like, trails. Yeah. Well, no, 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 roads, like, roads. Oh, okay. Road. Right, you can get there completely on the road, okay. right? There's nice hills, and, and it's really beautiful, right? San Rafael's a gorgeous place to ride a bike because people are very respectful of cyclists in Marin County, a lot more than they are here. So it's really wonderful to ride bikes here. So I lived out in the wild there, like in Marin and here in the city, and I was riding 50 miles a day, 75 miles a day, right, on a bicycle. Oh, man, I was like, like, I, you know, that was like in my early 40s, I was in the best shape of my life. Motorists have, I feel, in the Bay, have to be truck. really kind to cyclists. In general, Generally, I, um, I found it especially in San Francisco. Especially if you plan your routes, like, according to, like, where there's bike lanes and other, like, bicycle safety, it's already kind of been pre-negotiated for you. The biggest tip is to stay off of the freaking sidewalk. Never ride on the sidewalk, ever, because you're so much safer when you're out in the street. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, riding on the sidewalk is for, like, if you're less than 10 years old. And yeah, you still, like, stop. And and you're only moving at, like, two or three miles an hour, right? Yeah. Yeah, my, my nephew's only five, and he's, like, kind of close to graduating into, like, we can ride on the road. Like, you're going to learn how to ride. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, sure the car. Oh, yeah. 
definitely, right? Yeah. Because I had like four or five concussions. Actually, my five-year-old nephew, he got a big wheel, and he loved that thing, and he like rocked that thing really hard. Cause he's a really long-legged kid, and his body's like big enough. He can really like kind of do tricks, right? I mean, it's a freaking piece of plastic. So yeah, he pulled no. curves to like kind of do all this stuff, and then he graduated out to his real bicycle. And he hates that thing. The training wheels are like fucking him up big time. And like, the off. whole physics is so much different. It's like, it's funny seeing him be like frustrated. I don't and, recommend like, training wheels for people that are learning to ride bikes. Me, I don't want to live out of false, one, but... It develops a false sense of trust when you should really... All you have to do to teach people how to ride bicycles is to keep the wheels straight, right? Just keep the wheels yeah. straight. That's all you got to know when you're riding a bike. My other right? nephews, they have a grassy backyard that's a slight downhill slope, and I was kind of, they still haven't learned either. Oh, yeah, I happened to be one time. I had a... And I was like, dude, just take your training wheels off and ride. I'm like, what if you fell down in your backyard? Like, you fell down in your yard already, right? Who cares? Yeah, but you're moving on a bicycle, right? And even 10 miles an hour is... It would be too scary to fall down in the yard. Yeah, well, it's grass. But yeah, here when you fall in the concrete, it's not very forgiving. <laughs> yeah. Because right. I crashed my dirt bike. I don't I don't fall on concrete, but like, if I crash my dirt bike in the dirt, I'm like, it's okay. Yeah, I tried mountain biking and I, I don't, I'm not like. So, looking at the lot of this street, we feel on our sundown? Oh, yeah, I know, I'm getting kind of bored too. That guy's got a nice little spot. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of naked people down here this year. That's good, since they made it illegal, right? Right, I got picked up one time for walking down Hate Street naked. Right, that was a lot of acid. Right, a lot of acid. <laughs> Did you even know you were naked? Oh yeah. oh, yeah, I had developed this whole philosophy behind it. Right, because I, like, what had happened was, I had, um, I had been, like, I'm a, a psychedelic researcher. And, um, I was doing a lot of experiments at the time with, not only me, but you also have to have people, other people, to quantify the experience for you, right? You know, and we were like, you know, exploring like, like new horizons in psychedelic chemistry, right? That only get visited maybe once every five to ten years, like in terms of like having access to the chemicals in the laboratories and things like that. And at any rate, um, I had dosed myself up really good on like a gram. Like, which is pretty commonplace, right? It happens to people. And then I forgot that I was high on that. Right? Even though I was really high on that. Right? So I went around for like two weeks and I kept trying to prove to people that I wasn't high on acid because I kept eating hits of acid. Right? And then I ended up, like, you know how you get when you start getting spiritual, you start getting really weird. Right? And like, so I started getting really schizophrenic as a side effect of, of all this LSD and not sleeping. And that's what I really wanted to do, was go to sleep. And, uh, but I thought it would be funny if I took all my clothes off and walked up the street. And it was really hilarious, the responses that I got from people and everything. And I was totally, like, having visions. Like, when they took me into Mount Zion to see the psychiatrist, right, I was sitting there talking to her, and there's, her face was, like, more than 300 faces of Buddha, right? And I kept telling her, like, she was really mean. And like uh, this Asian lady, and uh, I kept telling her, "Hey, look, all I need to do is go to sleep." So they locked me into this room, and when I realized I couldn't vibrate through the wall by manipulating my cellular energy, that was pretty high. And uh, because it could be possible if you could change the vibration of your of the atoms in your body, right? You could literally pass through a wall, which is all bullshit. You know, it's bullshit philosophy, you know, uh, bullshit psychic. Stuff, but you know what I'm saying, right? And when I realized I couldn't get through the door, I was like, hmm, I must be really high, right? And then they came in and made me take, uh, before they let me out of the room, I had to take uh, Halidol, which is like really bad. I don't recommend taking it. I couldn't sit still for two days afterwards. Literally could have not sit still. But anyway, they got me to sleep and I slept for about four or five hours. I got up, I hadn't eaten anything in about a week. And I ate like seven bag lunches that they had, that they had like the people that were, it was like a clinic, but it's closed now. But it was a really good mental health resource. I mean, they really did, mental health wise, they really did take care of people there, you know, that I was legitimately crazy at the time. And, uh, but they let me go, I ate the lunches. They said, we gotta keep you for 18 hours, then we'll let you go, I said, fine. So I sat around watching TV and ate. 
great. They gave me uh, some old 70s clothes to wear for the, for the ride home because I didn't have any clothes when I came in there. And uh, I could go back and all my friends flipped out about it pretty hard. But uh, that was okay. This was in the mid 80s, about 88, late 80s. And I was really into death rock at the time, and God. And because uh, that, that was really what was going on. Living up on Hate Street, which was like a psychedelic. It's one of the reasons I moved to San Francisco, is because this is a been a, a, a excellent psychedelic laboratory for people. Because you know, in order to do, uh, if you're going to be involved with psychedelics, a lot of it's totally and completely illegal. Right? And the government will put you in jail for a really, really long time. Right? And like, like worse than like white. Right? Um, so it all has tends to be. Like I said, it's, some things only happen every once in a while when you have access to certain things. And I actually have been saved all my notes over the years. And I still keep in contact like professionally with people in the hopes that our field of research will be like re, you know, legalized by the drug enforcement industry because I would probably quit live streaming and start doing that instead. Because, <laughs> the, you know, I, like, I'm not afraid to explore the, the, the psychic variety you know, of your mind, right? Because you're, weak, you know, it's like, it's like uh, uh, when you're here, it's like we created, you know, we created this reality with our thoughts. Like this wouldn't exist unless there was an imagination to think of it in the first place, right? And so, like, when you start getting in, and, and like, it's hard to quantify and actually explain to people that, like, but psychedelics have actually like have been responsible for great leaps of. Uh, of our technology, like the internet, and from PCs and computers wouldn't exist without technology, right? You know, because uh, you know you have to be able to visualize things, and it really helps. You know, and it's like completely non addictive. I met somebody that quit using alcohol by like going Excellent. to like Africa and using some kind of natural psychedelics. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat the game. Eat the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A friend of mine is in, he's in prison right now, Dana Beal. Uh, he was uh, one of the founders of the Youth International Party, the Yippies, back in the 60s, right? At any rate, uh, he was a big proponent of the game, right? And, uh, yeah, that's really good if you're going to try to quit alcohol. Uh, personally, I haven't had a, I had, like, I had one toast about a year ago with a friend of mine, uh, but that was it. I haven't had a, like, when uh, Occupy happened, I rededicated myself towards activism, right? And I got involved with Occupy, that's how I started live streaming. And uh, ever since then, I've been doing the live streaming thing, and I managed to develop it into a like a, a you know a coherent series of thoughts about how to do it, right? And like I like argue back and forth with other live streamers, and like I try to work with as many people. What's nice about this whole thing is that you can have communications with people around the world, and you can talk to them, and you can actually like have an influence about what goes on in your environment beyond like people can actually have power through this lens. And when I'm sitting here, because I'm an instrument of the people that are watching, right? And if they ask me to do something, or if they want me to go up and talk to somebody, or deliver a message, or whatever, you see, and that's a way of actually going outside of your physical body to be able to influence things and what goes on in other parts of the world. And I've been able to give like legal instructions to people during a live stream, right? Well, as I was watching them online, people need to know exactly what to say to the police. So they wouldn't get arrested. Right? The police were trying to arrest these Occupy kids. And I was like, well, you have a right to be there. And as long as you're not loitering, the police can't make you move. Right? And I said, you have a right. You know, and like, they can try to arrest you. So anyway, I saved them from getting arrested and getting a ticket. Right? So, yeah, so that was kind of cool. So, but the applications on this have not even, like, begun to be fully explored. Right? And I'm a really big proponent of this technology. It's cheap. Like the camera costs 150 bucks, right? 61 dollars a month for unlimited data and a Metro PCS. No, right? it doesn't. I think that the the you have the phone down to like 30 bucks now. Like, yeah, yeah. My phone's like really similar to yours, and I saw one that was like similar to ours in their window. Yeah. And I'm like 30 bucks. <laughs> you know, a good picture. Anybody can live stream. I totally encourage people to do it all the time. Uh, we had a lot of people, right? Yeah. Is that an optimist? Uh, 
It was, it was a decent one at the time that I got it. I'm happy with it. This is a machine that's all this. And uh, what I liked about this one, it's been knocked out of my hands. Uh, one thing is the live stream that we covered in the illustration. That uh, one of my major objectives is to cover the flower. Right? I mean, I'm out there for people and, like, to keep up with any people by the police that took me up the stairs. Yeah, it's like, I'm out there to protect them. Right? And when the cops know that they're on camera, right? They're totally, like, fucking what? It's like, it's amazing the amount of power that you have over the police. And it's just so no, continuously being broadcast over here. Right? And you have an audience. It really doesn't matter how many people are watching. And the phone is They can't edit it. Yeah, they can't. They've been like subpoenaing your account, and the only thing they can make do is leave it up on the internet. And personally, I hope I get subpoenaed because I take the push. Yeah, right. I don't care. I'm not scared. Right? You know, I mean, I you know, I just you know, I I suffered you know, we came here just two years ago, and I fucking say it was never done. So there ain't nothing that anybody could tell the community or anything from my friends. You know? I know. Mean, I've like, I'm hoping that, I've seen the police, I've been, we've been watching the police come to my door to the track, I've never been concerned about it at all. It's got to be one of the prettiest fucking places I've ever lived in. Where are you? At the Seneca Hotel, on 6th and Stevens. I know, I want to know. I used to do real talk, real big deals. Real talk deals, and that baby, oil. Yeah, yeah, I see this place over here, right? Until I realized that the Salvation Army is not for us, they're kind of against us. They have way huge buildings, like what they're doing is pretending to go over there. Yeah, yeah. It's like, more keeping stuff for themselves and keeping people down. Yeah, I kind like, of agree. they're kind of like part of it. I mean, that's cool that you go... Well, they're property things. Yeah. So it's a great thing to volunteer to do. And it's a cool way to actually expose social injustice to young people, which is like part of what I ended up doing. Like, like, church groups from Fresno or something, like visiting to volunteer for the Salvation Army as a big group for like a day. One day. Make a difference for one day. What the fuck? Like, it was kind of stupid. Like, it's almost like a burden. Now we have to work. We don't need their help because we already kind of had, like, an infrastructure developed. So, like, you know, I'm there every Tuesday. But, like, all of a sudden, now there's all these people there on Tuesday. And it's like, okay. Yeah, I kind of think that, too, sometimes. Like, we get, um... I, I get food delivered to the building. Like, I'm not just going to order it. I'm 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 just going to
That's how we met. And a one-time member of the Sex Workers Union of San Francisco. Oh, cool! Just by merit of an experience I had in Thailand once when I ran out of money. <laughs> No, you guys really helped me out when I was really poor. <laughs> you want to sit down? He ended up right out? there. That's where it happened. It happened that way. I just ran into jelly. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know. I talked to the dude for a bit. We have to, we have to, get to think about the future weapon. Use in the world, right? So that's what you got to think about, right? It's better than gun, right? Why shooting is better than having a gun. Can I take a picture of your T-shirt? Put on my Facebook. Cool. I mean, we've been trying since the 60s, and yeah, we got there close many times. But you know, yeah, we're getting there. You know, generation. The yesterday, that there was a there was a de uh, demonstration against the government in every time zone in the world simultaneously. Really? Yeah. Well, there was one in so. Berkeley University, um, and they had signs. It's time for a revolution. It's I like this boy full of androgyny. Right? So, like, uh, I actually knew somebody who was an actual hermaphrodite. And I was able to talk to the other computer channel. I was performing to sleep because I knew they had both of them, right? And like, it was really weird. Really, like, he was such a nice guy, like sometimes. But then he was like, not a very nice woman sometimes, right? And it was like, kind of amazing. So like watch your perception of him like of his gender transform from like male to female and back to that right? And I knew him for a long time. And unfortunately he had a really sad story um, that because he was an hermaphrodite, he had this neighbor who was uh, who was, let's just put it mildly, violent and very homophobic and ended up uh, killing him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he which is really sad. He's the only, you know, you know how rare hermaphrodism is? It's, you know, it's like one in like a hundred million. You know, true hermaphrodite. But yeah. We're out here with cause for Bradley Manning. Uh, now personally, politically, this is, if you're going to pick a day to watch her on YouTube, but today would be one of those great days, right? I wish I had the body to carry it off. Like I did a, I was a, I was the author at a church that works with me. I did that for like almost about a year. That was just before I met you, right? Like I met this really weird minister that started this church of St. Priapus, right? And uh, you know, you go into this guy's house, and he had more penis icons than anybody I'd ever, you know, I mean, and I was just a lad coming to San Francisco and never seen anything like that, right? And uh, so he talked to me into being the altar of the ceremony. Yeah, I had to catch the trolley. Yeah, you should. You want to make it all the way down Market Street, so. Yeah, no, I have a, my friend Eric here. He's on uh, my second year. I have an attendant to help me out. And I'm going to have him push my wheelchair and I'm going to walk. See if I can't walk it. I might have to stop, but it's pretty slow. It doesn't go very fast. It's too fast. Yeah, but like this thing I'm doing here, it takes up a lot of my energy because I got to be conscious of what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. It's up for hours and hours. That's the whole thing of what I'm doing. You know, it's a totally different concept than any other form of media, right? You know, because what you're trying to create is a community of people online and around the world, right? So it's amazing how you can affect situations just by watching a live stream. Right? If it's like a true, like two-way communication that you have with your audience, and uh, the power of it's really amazing. Like I could have, I could have like, if I was actually interested in live streaming this production, 
Heather Conway has been sitting up at the end of the march, going to shooting pictures of all the different groups, right? But since I'm doing the live stream, I just wanted to hang out with the Bradley Manning contingent. Right? And you're one of the stars on this live stream, Mr. X. No, no, this is not really mine. Like, like the only thing, the only thing that's concerned is like, I have this live stream up now, and the only thing I really get concerned with is copyrights, because I do know that there's a Michael Jackson song that was played, like, already on this live stream. And if I post it to YouTube, I get flagged, right, for copyright violence. And, uh, so that led me to like, like, uh, start my own now, so that's what it's right. First of all, this has been to be the biggest one of all. And it's also, you know, a lot more, like, straight people. This is Bradley Manning, it's more of a political thing. So it's kind of sit back down if you're not using the free for each sees the whole world. So that way I won't miss the march. Those are some pretty nice shoes you got on there, Jim. I like those. Those are the chalk, right? I'm actually having a pretty good time. It's a nice little party. So this is a nice fun little party. This is one of the best parties in the world, dude. How many people do you think are in the manic Did you about a thousand people so far? This way too, beyond us. Right. Um, You're beautiful, sister. We're up to the fence. Right. Here we go. The only thing that's annoying is the only big crowd is there. Right. There we go. Oh yes. Now we got some action here. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm having a pretty good time. Any four shows is a good time for a little bit of Oh, yeah. That's what I do. It keeps, like, 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 so we love the fight. We have equal Fuck your live stream. Fuck your live stream. Fuck your live stream. I'm just kidding, guys. What's going on, y'all? I was live streaming earlier, but my camera died, so I sent everybody over to your stream. Hopefully, it comes from you. Yeah, for you, you know. Yeah. You know, there's not a whole lot going on right now. No, there isn't. The main sausage march. We covered uh, the parade earlier. We were up on the float. We got some stuff from, like, in there. So you can certainly go to my channel and watch some other footage from the parade. But we didn't get the Bradley Manning, and my battery's dead, so I'm not going to get Bradley Manning. Well, you got to save your batteries, dude. Or get some more. I keep telling you to buy as many batteries. You should have to waste three batteries at all times, dude. I got three batteries for the camera, baby. They look like anyone else. Actually, people have been taking my picture quite a bit today, which is unusual. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk the whole parade. We're just taking yeah, these. No, I haven't seen her today. She should be, like, I literally yeah, left her right here. here. How many people do you think are here? Oh, a couple hundred thousand. I'm talking about in the probably manic Oh, two to three thousand at least. Yeah. Well, maybe I should take a walk around. Um, yeah, no, it's like, it's packed all the way back here. It's hard to tell because, like, so that was those blue and white uh, balloons, that's Old Navy. And uh, I'll stand in front of the camera. Give me a little bit of audience. No, that's all right. I'm, I'm actually wish, you know, got this going on, but we can still talk. Yeah, no, uh, so that's like Old Navy, and they're doing a dance party, and then Google and Twitter are right behind them. So Ooh. it's hard to tell where the Bradley Manning contingent ends and where the, like, corporate Raider contingent ends. Yeah, because uh, the closer you get to the end of the parade, like, the more people are watching. I guess that's, yeah. that's the only reason I'm sticking around for this. Yeah. Right. And, uh, well, and then there will be the party at Civic Center. That'll be fun. I'm not going to I got to work tonight, man. I know you're doing pieces, right? I fell asleep. Dumbass. You know, when you get old, dude, and by the way, by, uh, just because people are vegans doesn't talk, don't automatically assume that they're vegan. You know, they all eat salad, right? You don't eat salad? Well, I eat salad, too, but it's not my favorite thing. 
<laughs> well, look, dude, the place where I work, we have one vegan option. Oh, I can tell you a real story. I wish I had a camera about one of your bosses that owns the uh, Escape from New York. Yeah, you told me that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll tell you the whole story. I'll go find him and ask him. Yeah, yeah. But this guy, that's how he found out. Anyway, I was there one time when the, when the feds raided their clubhouse down on my... Like, I first heard about gay marriage back in 1975, the very first time I met Dorothy Hallowlack, who used to teach me how to work my fantastic family. All these years later, finally having the vision that Dorothy Hallowlack wanted for an entire nation, along with the entire world, which is a vision of love, peace, and happiness for all humans. And civil rights and civil liberties for everyone, excluding no one. It's an honor to be here today. This will be my fourth march, a march from the trans march for my, my friends of the transgender that need to have equality even more so than ever. We need to end the hatred, we need to end the discrimination. We need to end the violence, uh, and, and we, need, we, need to, we need all of us to come together and realize that we are all one, we are all human beings, that's, that's and we all have a right to be treated with respect, with dignity, with no discrimination. This is what this is about. This is the Gay Pride Parade, which is actually one of the world's largest at this point. There's over 1,000 people today, different organizations coming together to free Bradley Manning and to free all prisoners that are whistleblowers. We are all united together today to have a world vision of peace, a world vision of people coming together, creating a better society, ending the greed, and helping people that are in need instead of feeding an illegal war that is doing nothing but destroying and killing in its path and genociding people around the world for corporate means and measures. And this must stop. Today we are showing the world that we are on to Washington, D.C., we are on to Hollywood, we are on to all of them, and they need to stop, and they need to lead, just stop with being evil and come together with love. That's all we're asking for, Obama. Otherwise, we should have each one. He has, he has drones in our skies that kill people. He has taken away civil rights and freedoms of, of freedom of speech in a public assembly. And you're telling me that I, I might, I'm supposed to like this guy? I don't, you know, I, I have no feelings at all. No, I'm very indifferent. It's okay. Obama, you've got a free any love. He was helping indigenous people that were sick, that are sick and dying. What about his party? Many And you found him where? In a prison? Where there's millions of pages of documentation that talks about the medical marijuana and how good it is for us and how it's in the Bible? So what does that make you? If it's in the Bible, the grass of the fields, the sacred earth, the sacred plant, the tree of life, then what does that make you and Holder? Think about it. Do we need these kind of people in power? People? No, we don't. Come together and let's make the Jacqueline Initiative happen. Let's heal the planet, heal society, and make a better future for the entire planet. Yeah, I, I enjoy these days. So I'm, I'm, I couldn't be better. That's great. I'm, uh, you know, I'm speaking out now for our initiative, and uh, I'm getting a really warm response. I have some uh, engineers who are going to make an app for us. Yeah, it's going to win. That's why. It's <laughs> www.cchi.org app. Boo boo. But we want the best law we can get, right? Excuse me. I said we want the best law that we can get. Oh yes, of right? course. We want better than what Absolutely. Colorado's got. It's going right? to be regulated. It will be regulated. Like agriculture and tax like agriculture, like fruit. Yeah, but not like liquor, right? The vegetable, the vegetable that creates all kinds of things. We have the hemp plant that we use for industry. It has over 100,000 uses. Please read the Emperor Wears No Clothes from my beloved and cherished friend Jack. Jack yeah, Harry, at that time, the Emperor Wears No Clothes. Yes, it's the Emperor Wears No Clothes by Jack, G A C K. H-E-R-E-R, -E -R, and Chris Conrad. I actually met him. They, they edited it. 
get it. Get it and yes. So, read it, learn, learn about where in the Bible it talks about the sacred herb, the sacred plant, the tree of life, which is cannabis M and Jacob. Come enlightened and with the ignorance and the arrogance. Just because somebody tells you that it's bad and they get a lot of money to hurt innocent people while destroying crops that are necessary for our patients that are terminally ill. You know, you want to continue to think that what they tell you is the truth? No. You find out for yourself. You start reading. You go into the internet. I want you to go into the Library of Congress. They have so much data. Kind of a synonym, data. I want you all to become super intelligent people. And, and, and I want you to become more humanitarian. And I want and I want the discrimination and the hatred to end towards the medical cannabis patients, the providers. I don't want to see not one more single arrest. That's what this cannabis initiative is about. Jack Cabrera wrote it. Jack Cabrera penned it. He believed in the mom and pops. He was not one of those conglomerate, you know, corporation types. If anybody ever says any derogatory thing about the Jack Cabrera initiative, you know that they are not telling you the truth and they have no idea what the hey they're talking about. But those kind of people, we can talk to them and get them on board too. Because this is about all of us. The initiative is about healing our planet. We're going to start in California. Come in a little closer to the camera. It's uh, hey, uh, www.cchi2014.org and go there and, and volunteer for the grassroots effort. All the money that, that goes to this cause is going for signature uh, gatherers and their families and for, and for promotional needs as we need it. But I mean, I haven't gotten a dime and I don't want a dime because. Well, I want to see marijuana legalized. I want to, I want to see cannabis. I keep saying marijuana. I'm so brainwashed by that term. Yes, cannabis. And, and, and I want to see cannabis legalized in California. That's absolutely. I'm jealous of Colorado. We need it. Yes. Yes, but this is more than just recreational and adult use. Responsible for recreational adult use. This is the whole enchilada. This is about, you know, healing the earth. This is about deforesting. Cleaning up the air sheds and the water sheds and, and you know and not using toxins anymore. Shutting down the industries that are a part of NAFTA in Mexico, for example, that, that have pollution rolling down their streets with children walking barefoot in this stuff. And, you know, you can see it running down hillsides. I have a degree from the University of California in Santa Cruz Environmental Studies. And they showed up in videos, and I, my God, I, I mean, I knew that I had to make this really a reality, and not just some kind of dream going to go up and smoke. Because this is concrete. This is life. And without using the hemp biomass, the Bible, we will to end up killing ourselves off. Well, we can create buildings out of it, we can, no, we can make conduit out of it, houses. we can create food out of it, clothing, fiber, you name it. Why? Because the Creator created it. And why? Because it's in every single holy text that you will never open. It is in the Quran. It is in the Torah. It is in, it is in the Holy Bible. What did they burn the menorah with? What oil kind of oil was it, kiddies? According to Rabbi Nathan, what did the Shinto religion, the Japanese people, burn before 1937 in their sacred temples? They burned cannabis as an incense. They burned blood as an incense. This war that has started in 1937 and then has escalated into, into total insanity Madness, yeah. has got to come to an end. We must get on the ballot for the Jack Rear Initiative in 2014, California Cannabis Initiative in 2014, and end the persecution.
combination of, of cannabis patients and their providers and their doctors and end all of the bullshit and shut Holder and Obama down in a peaceful, loving way. And no more Wall Street bailouts, and no more chemtrails, and no more HARP, H A A R P. Learn about it. You need to learn about it. No more it's a violation of our civil rights and liberties. Let Obama listen to us. This is our this is our really peaceful demands here. Respect. We're not being impeached. How about that? I haven't seen her. I'm not really looking though, you know. <laughs> Where's your press pass? Uh, it's in my wallet. Uh, <laughs> should have figured. You know. No, I should wear it, but I don't like having shit on my. I don't like wearing yeah, I, stuff I, on my my body, right? I like, feel you, yeah. I understand. Well, if you got it, that's all. Especially on a day like today, right? Right. It's yeah, well, if you got it. You got, it. You got one. It don't matter where it is, as long as you got it. Great, great weather, huh? Oh, beautiful. It's perfect. You know, with climate, with the climate change. So you, know, you know, and it was weird having rain last week here in San Francisco. Yeah, the weather is perfect. Uh, nice. Yeah, because it doesn't rain yeah, we're at right all. <laughs> come to visit sometime. You might like it. <laughs> yeah, we'll just, don't, just come here, spend your money, and then go back to where you came yeah, from. Yeah, right. Yeah, we don't want overpopulation. Right, yeah, we don't need you here. We have too many people already. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah, find we, a place for you. I, I was asked by Diane Feinstein's aide uh, to come to Washington to speak to the Congress. And I told them, why don't you just go into YouTube and watch my videos, all my speeches? That's all you gotta do. I don't have to fly out there. Just do that. Yeah, I just remember that San Francisco. It's the Congress. I'm all over the place. That it's the kind of place that's really good at taking your money really fast. Oh, yeah. Right? Forget it. Like, you know, if you want to come oh, yeah. to San Francisco. Expect to get quick in the wallet. And, right. then, and then everybody be grieving and then you know, I'm not going to Right, everything costs a fortune here. Like we have the highest gas prices in the country. Right? The second highest rent after it's, Manhattan. It's, uh, I think it's because we're a lot of vegetarians. I think that's you know. Like, we used to, you know, it's like, what are we getting? Oh, Nothing. Oh, I don't know about that. I got great weather. I got great friends. I have to spend. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad Dennis is kicking back in. I get my friend Dennis last year. I get to visit Dennis Stern whenever I want. I can go to the Redwoods. Yeah, how's Dennis doing anyway? He's doing great. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's feeling good and he's uh, helping. You know, he's is he going to go out and campaign for the, uh, uh, perhaps is it, look into the is California it, Cannabis Initiative? And yeah, is he going to go out and campaign for that? Excuse me? Is he going to campaign for that? I, that's what I was talking to him actually this very afternoon. He said it sounded like a good idea. Yeah, well, that's, I understand that. Once it goes nationwide, we can, he's going to, on every single arrest that Dennis Crowe has ever had in his life for cannabis and MMJ will be totally sealed, expunged, and destroyed. So it is a total win win situation. These students are going to get their loans back. Who in the world in the right mind would be for that? No, this is bigger. This is like, like the marriage campaign. Thank you. 
You have to, if you want people to hear you, you got to get a little bit closer. Oh, sorry. It's okay. I know you couldn't hear me. It's kind of loud in the background. Yeah, it's got louder. I got to stop anyway. I, I got I to break. Stop, Jeff. Yeah, you should take a break. Yeah, I'm taking a break. <laughs> 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 I know. I've been trying to make it. And I'm already talking to organizers around here about uh, organizing to have a march next year with all the contingents coming together for Cannabis Center of J-Hub. With big leaves and signs and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think we're going to have to do too much to get people to vote for it. Yeah, and get the signatures. That's what we need is the signatures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, so you're arguing. Let's see it, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know if it's going to be able to come in. Yeah, I pushing it this year with this event. Downtown San Francisco with the Bradley Manning contingent. And one reason I'm actually pushing with live streaming on people is because a lot of these people I've known as political activists for many, many years, and we all know each other, and, and so consequently. Uh, you know, like journal, you know, as a citizen journalist, you said no one not to be pushy with people. Social media behind us are probably great. It's probably pretty intense. I wonder if it's trend trend trending on Twitter. I should have brought my laptop along, but I always hate lugging a laptop. You know, I, I, I lugged a laptop around for, oh geez, the San Francisco Mobile Lifestyle that I was reading. I think I, I hauled around a laptop just about every day. I had one with me for many years of uh, doing web development. Good lord. Let's see. Odd topic. The building uh, over there in the center. I, used to, I worked there for a number of years for a statistical research company. The building over there in the center, that's condos. It's just been recently constructed. This whole area is about to uh, explode in terms of tall buildings. Uh, this street right here is a construction site that's going up. I think there's going to be 26 cranes operational in San Francisco over the next uh, operation like big cranes. Uh, well, we had the Bradley Manning demonstration when uh, when Daniel Ellsberg, he's actually going to be here 
Uh, when he was here, uh, there was like two to three hundred people there on uh, Market and uh, 12th or 13th Street, I believe. Right, right around in there, DeBose. Market and DeBose. Yeah. people with the Dropbox t-shirts. Yeah, there's a lot of techies living in San Francisco now. George G. Mead, if you're interested in following a live stream of the proceedings, a uh, friend of mine, Jay, uh, you can catch him at Occupy Bloomberg, uh, just do a little search, and you can pick him up, and he will be live streaming the, uh, the Bradley Manning court hearings tomorrow, right, did you guys know that? We're going to have a live streamer at the Bradley Manning court hero at Fort Mead, Maryland. So that'll be interesting. So that's, uh, and his handle on Ustream is Occupy Bloomberg, B L O O M B E R G, just do a search, and he will come up. And uh, he should be starting at 9 Eastern Standard, or yes, Eastern, Eastern Daylight Time, right? 9 o'clock uh, Eastern, 12 o'clock, or uh, 6 o'clock Pacific. Also, um, I was watching several live streams for people that are watching. Um, there was one on Russia today that was pretty good. Uh, generally, MSM live streams, uh, I don't really consider them to be an actual live stream because there's no interaction between the audience and what they're actually showing on the video. So, Tell you the truth, people are watching. I'm getting kind of bored. Maybe I'll get up and walk around here in a minute. I'll be right back. I gotta take a walk around.
lots of radicals that are out for Bradley Manning. I want to go over to the other side of the crowd here. Lots of trash looks like generated by this event. Just kind of sad in a way. I know you have to get the message out, but I try to stay away from uh, paper products when I'm trying to get out my political message or anything like that. Um, you know, electronic way is the best way to go. You know, you end up with all this paper stuff. <laughs> Ooh, we got all those old Navy people on the other side here. Ooh. Hey, old Navy. That's the gap. Owned by the same people. That just shows you a little corporatization of pride, which is why I didn't go to it for so many years. They nearly had their lives destroyed by the 
this has been one of my longer live streaming sessions. We've been going on for about three and a half hours now. Yeah. And then we're down here for people who maybe just tuned in. Uh, we're at Howard and Beale Street in downtown San Francisco, awaiting to leave here to march in the SF5 parade. LGBT, uh, which is the third largest parade in the world, celebrating uh, gay rights and equality. And this year, there's going to be uh, seems like there's a lot more people than normal because of the recent Supreme Court decisions. And people as uh, food here at the parade is actually quite happy. Um, and, uh, Everybody's very op op uh, optimistic. There's been marriages uh, that went on all day yesterday at City Hall. Uh, today, uh, uh, starting tomorrow, you'll have to make an appointment to marry. But that's been going on here in San Francisco. Uh, so we're real happy about that out here in California. Yeah. yeah, so people that are out there watching, you have to forgive me if I get tired. Anyway, I think we're leaving. Oh. Are we getting ready to go? Well, here we go. Well, I'm gonna walk. Why don't you just push my chair for me? That would be great. I would appreciate that much. Yeah. And I might have to sit down at some point, but we'll see. We'll just play it by here, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I mean, there's other people here in wheelchairs, so I have to put it I generally find that having. Yeah, it's fine. It's no, just like today. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I've been at it for a long time in the city. I'm going to have a memorial built to myself here. Like, I'm trying to raise the money for it. I actually have a spot. It's not for me. It's for me but we did a thing called the uh, Arcade Sigil at uh, UM Plaza, downtown San Francisco, you know, down at Pacific Center. In 86, it was the longest occupation city. Uh, it lasted nine years and X amount of months. I don't know. And, uh, uh, 30 people died on that spot for my uh, AIDS, basically, HIV. And uh, we got the clear so we could actually have a whole memorial built for all those 30 people to die. I got kicked out because I wasn't the only one that was, I was the only one that wasn't HIV positive. So they kicked me out of the group, everybody got mad. You know, and I was there locking myself in the federal building and everything, right? With my friends and people I knew were sick. Anyway, give little people a little bit of view. That's kind of cool. As soon as we get down the street here, we'll be able to spread it out. Ah, it's a beautiful day. We're probably, finally looks like we're on the move. I've been sitting around for the last two and a half, three hours. Uh, I was going to like, when is this thing ever going to happen, right? But it's fine. It's, we've been in good company and it's been a really nice day. And, uh, Oh, thank you very much. Right. And I'm going to try to walk as long as I can. Nice float here from Calumet Photographic. Now, if I wanted to do this commercially, I would have probably sat at the end of the this thing, but I'm not really about money and doing these lives. I mean, it's more about a political thing for me. Yeah, once we get out of the market street, we'll move a lot faster. Everybody's out here, we're 2,000 strong, marching for Bradley Manning. We're here in the San Francisco LGBT Pride Parade. That's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender parade. 
Still being debated in the court system. And I'm not like, I feel like it's journalists and citizen journalists that, as long as I'm not like, you know, making out, making a lot of money off of something, so then I, you know, I shouldn't have to pay. You know, but I think I make more thing about artists and do they get the money, but the money doesn't have nothing in the hands of the artist. Yeah, well, the rights of the artist extend not only to the monetary, um, monetary stuff, but also to how the um, work is used. Oh, yeah. uh, in one avenue, stuff, stuff like that. So we're moving along here. We just took another couple of steps. Alright. Oh, yeah. I'm getting extra to block the traffic. Right. I got it. 
administration. And the best way to do it because you have about 20 minutes to block Market Street before the cops will actually show up and try to arrest you. You have about 20 minutes to block Market Street before the cops will show up and try to arrest you. Blocking Market Street. I was never very good running in the first place. That's why I took up cycling, right? I'm looking for a cycling club. Well, actually, uh, it was pretty cool. I'm going to get back on the cycle again. Well, I have to, you know. For health reasons. I feel better. I was thinking about thinking of uh, getting a mount, like in doing some bicycle like video like the world of what it looks like from the from the wheel like, a, like what it would look like if you took a picture from the spoke okay well we got the big sign they told us to hurry up or nothing dude you know it's like oh we're getting ahead of ourselves that shit we're in a parade there we go free bradley manning accused wikileaks what's the Great sign, huh? It looks good now that it's all unfolded. It's got plenty of space in yeah. it. Yeehaw! That's why we're posting again. Because they were going to have them as the Grand Marshal of the parade until they were pressing somehow uh, again, to uh, rescind their invitation uh, to uh, grab the Manning to do that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool because they're standing just far enough behind it, people can get a good picture of what's going on, right? Which I think it's cool. Yeah. Let's sit down for a second. All right. Stupid thing, I want to get rid of this thing. Oh. You don't have to push me on the Oh, that woman, yeah. She'll find us. How many, uh, how many people do you think we have in our thing? About, about a thousand, maybe? Sorry, what? How many people do you think is in our, uh, in our contingent here at the Gay Pride Parade? Oh, the Bradley Manning contingent? Yeah. Easily several hundred. Easily that much. Yeah. I think uh, closer to a thousand. But we'll see when we get out on Market Street. I'm going to try to make this under my own power today. Yeah, I forgot her name. What was her name again? Me? What's the lady you were talking to again? Rachel. Rachel, okay. Yeah, I like her. She's a good conversationalist. Yeah. Right, she's got a point of view of her own. Yeah. They have to be to be a good conversationalist. Yeah. To be a sex worker, you have to have the force for the force into having your own point of view.
three with Bradley Manning, which she does some jazz stuff. Yeah, but we're gonna wait for the band. I'm a veteran of parades, man, you know. I didn't know they had the restrooms here. Say what? Restrooms? Yeah, I didn't know they had the restrooms here. Oh. Somebody was asking about those earlier. Was I scared in precisely the wrong direction? Oh. That happens. Yeah. I'm sure there was more restrooms further down, too. Ignorance is like that. Right. Lots and lots of people here with the Bradley Manning contingent. At San Francisco's we need this uh, banner to come closer. Oh yeah, he's kind of pushy. You know, I had he was like yelling at me for talking to the. I'm like, dude, it's like I was doing an interview and he like interrupted my interview. You know. Okay. Fuck that. Let the sign get ahead of us a little bit. Or behind us, that way people can see it. Yeah. I always hate people that try to control what you do. You know, I'm not I'm not down with people controlling it, you know. I'm an old guy, I've been around for fifty something years, and I have to admit I don't take direction very well. 